Today is Christmas Day, December 25th, 2020, and this message is for Seiwei and Taylor and anyone else who wants to know how to put things together and make things in the world. I'm going to show you some next steps that we have to take now that we've received the first round of production prototypes from the fabricators that Seiwei and Taylor have been working with for many years. And we are off to a great start. Don't get me wrong, I am going to point out a lot of things that are wrong, but there are a lot of things that are right as well. Uh, but in order to make this move more quickly, I'm just going to focus on the things that I think we need to change. That said, this video is just an introduction, and I would love to have a meeting either Saturday or Sunday tomorrow or the day after with you both to take a look at this and see what the next steps are. Everything that I say is just my initial intuition. So first things first, the glass. We have a, uh, an example of the AR Plexi versus the um, standard glass that's uh, made here. This AR is, it's yellowish, and, it, and it's, it's about a 5% better uh, anti-reflective than, than this piece of glass. So I think this is out of the question. These will not be made. Um, we can move on from that. So no AR. We're just going to stick with glass as it is. With the hands, this is all kinds of messed up here. It's going to be hard to see like that. If you take a look here, you can see how bent the hand is. And that's just because I think there's just not enough, um, there's not enough meat to it. So it's just naturally bending. So I don't, I'm not really sure what needs to happen here. But I also know that, for instance, this actually doesn't even fit on. So on uh, the movements, they, it just doesn't fit. It just falls right off. So there's no tight fit on the movement. It's a much larger hole than it needs to be. The small hand actually looks pretty good. For the most part, they are straight on. But it could also use a bit more meat to it so that it's a little more sturdy. And again, this hand has the same problem. It does not fit on. This is the next piece, which are the back pieces, which I like a lot. This is the, this is the piece that is brushed versus the piece that I believe is just sandblasted and not powder coated. From what I understand, this, these are stainless steel pieces, so there's no way that they're going to rust. We can either have them done in uh, this brushed effect or this bead blast effect. Right now, I'm partial to the bead blast, but with the rim, I feel like this is right, this brushed look. However, note, I think it's worth taking a look at bead blasted rims as well. And potentially, maybe some other versions of, of brushing, not just right to left. Maybe there's a radial brush. Maybe some different brush types here with this, this steel. I like the bead blast. I like the idea of the bead blast being there and the engraving being shiny somehow. I'm not sure what, what that would actually take. Maybe just engraving directly into the steel is going to leave it shiny. They are heavy, I like that, but I also wanted to mention that they seem to have some sort of a dip in the, in the center of them. The way that they're cut, it's almost like the flat level and then it dips and then you come up again so that's, there's a recess in here. I would like that to be flat if possible. For instance, here's another piece. This is the front of the little present. These, for some reason, they feel the exact opposite. There's kind of like this um, semicircle kind of coming out on the side. And I would like to just take both of these and even them out so that there's just a really straight line that goes straight down. It's a perfect straight line. It's not as sharp. This is actually a pretty sharp edge. I like that this is a little more pleasant to the touch. However, it's just too, too much of a, a curve here. So this should be pretty as straight across as we can with a slightly less sharp sides. Hopefully we can do that on both of these pieces. Now about this piece and the one for the larger clock, this one, the matte powder coat feel is great. I like that. I, th I think we don't need to change that at all. The edge detail, again, it's too, too much of a curve. So that needs to be straight down. Uh, because I have to put these prints on there, and I don't know if you can notice here, but you can see that because of that um, flip, you can actually see some of the black on the front, and then on the back of here, it actually, the, the print comes across. 
So I'm trying to fight having to razor blade off the edge of these prints just to make everything come correct. If I have to do that, that's going to be impossible with this curve edge. So hopefully we can get a straight cut edge and I can cut things off if I need to. If there's a curve there and I cut things off, I'm probably gonna nick the curve and then potentially that would rust. Because as far as I understand that these actually are cold rolled steel. I do wanna mention that I know this has to be powder coated, but there is a piece that is missing. I know they have to hang these in order to powder coat them, but I wanna be sure that that piece is not going to turn into rust over time. I don't want that to happen. So that's another note with the small fries. If it is cold rolled steel and it is going to rust, we need to make sure that that is covered up in some way so that we don't have problems in the future. The size is, is excellent, but they're both way too heavy. This is incredibly heavy. This is just this steel face is 2.2 pounds. And so what I wanna suggest is, is, is there any way that we can get this down to as small as a half a millimeter? A half a millimeter, this is two millimeters right now. Can we get it to a half of a millimeter so we can take out a pound and a half of this weight? Because I'm genuinely concerned that it's going to be um, far too front heavy. It's so much heavier than I imagined it being. So that has to change. Uh, let's move on to the back here. Let's kind of take this and pop this in the back. I think this works really well. And it makes me believe that I also need to do a uh, metal back for, the, for this, for the small one as well. Uh, just to justify the price, I'm gonna have to raise the price because it just feels like a more complete piece when you have metal here and metal in the front. If we do that, that means we're gonna have to recess this part it needs to be smaller. It's gonna require us to take this part out. This is just too deep. So I think we can shave off just a little bit, which will make it feel a little, a little bit smaller, which I like. So that's another thing, you know, sinking. We knew that we were gonna to have to maybe make some changes to the cork piece, depending on the metal, and this is a, this is a great example of that. We also wanna make sure that we have magnet holes for this as well, because I think that that needs to set there. And so this is the piece, this, it feels, it's feeling really good. Now let's talk about this rim, which I think is off to a really good start but it is going to be challenging. So we put this on and this, this all lines up really nicely, see? That's looking good, that's, that's feeling nice. But without this, which, you know, this is a Lumix lens cap that goes directly over this lens that I'm using right now, and it's a, such a nice fit because of this felt on the inside. It's the felt on the inside that makes it sit very nicely. And I don't know if you noticed, but it looks like I've removed some pieces of this felt. This is with the inspiration for the present being a pressure fit design. Taking your razor and cut away these pieces and have applied them to the inside of this rim. And because of that, what we have is a functional pressure fit device already. My assumption is that what we need to do is, is get an item number for this particular felt glued thing and have them put it all the way on the inside of this rim. So that what we have is a slightly difficult to put on piece. So that's that. You see, we want it to be a little bit difficult to get on there. And I believe that if we have more of that felt, we'll, we'll be in a better condition. That said, Let's try to smash this in here as best we can. It still feels like we need a lot of work here. So this is something I think you're gonna to have to put your fingers on and feel, but it still has the sense, even if we put the, the glass in there, there's some, something's wrong. It doesn't feel completely legit yet. It's almost as if the glass is being revealed at certain points. I'm not really sure what the solution is. You see here, it's like I can almost, I can see the edge of the glass. I can stick my fingernail in there and touch the edge of the glass. I can, and that shouldn't, that shouldn't happen. Maybe that's just, we need a longer lip. I'm not really sure what the solution is there. So this is another thing that we'll have to work out. There is one more thing, and that is this item, which is pretty scary to look at. I know that what we were imagining was that we were going to put adhesive on the back of this and that the front of this would be a similar felt type of material all across this. That may, be, that's, that may be possible, and we put that here, but I want you to see something, and that is that what we have 
is a bit of a problem here because let's assume that this is on there as, as tight as possible. This just feels cheap. It just feels gross and people are gonna touch that and, it, and it's just too flimsy. So I know the reasons why we're doing this. I know why it needs to be flimsy, but I believe we've got to rethink this a little bit. Um, also, this is going to be the thing that the screw sits on because it's not exactly the same shape as the cork behind it, which I think is important. I don't want everything to be resting on this piece of plastic, which right now that's the way it would go. So some rethinking needs to happen with this piece. I'm open to showing this if, if, if we absolutely need to and just having what the original idea was, was having a uh, die cut felt just cover this inside part up, which might be the best thing. And that way it'll cover the magnets as well. I'm totally open to that. And I think that might be the way to go about it so that we can see this beautiful thing. And maybe we can put some kind of uh, branding on the inside of, of the movement. So that's that. I mean, the idea here was to cover this up because it's kind of unnecessary to see the whole thing. But unless we can find a way to make this tough and not bendable, I, th I, I think we're going to have to um, nix this and, th and rethink it. So that's where I am with everything. So thank you. Um, happy holidays to you. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy Festivus. This is going to be amazing as long as we, we remain patient. I think I'm talking to myself here because you two seem very patient. Just remain patient and know that this is going to work itself out. It's just going to take some time and that there are very clear next steps.